now we have our special guest, our expert of the day, a wonderful lady who is all about women reproductive health, Dr. Minu. Minu, yes. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Dr. Minu, Minu Singh. <laughs> uh, she is an obstetrician gynecologist, and I'm going to let her introduce herself further. Karibu, welcome. Thank you so much. Yes. I am Dr. Minu Singh. I'm gynecologist and obstetrician, mm -hmm. uh, working in the Mediheal group of hospital, Parkland, Nairobi. Uh -huh. And uh, I'm really great to be here on your show. Thank oh, you so much. Thank you so much for honoring us with your presence. Thank you so much. We really appreciate. So uh, I was having a conversation, you know, about reusable pads. Okay. And I know your area goes on and on and on and exactly. on, babies yeah. and everything, yeah. you know. Yeah. And uh, I'd like to have your take. What do you think of reusable pads? Uh, see, uh, there are a lot of commercial items mm -hmm. which uh, the women are using nowadays yes. uh, to maintain their menstrual hygiene. Mm -hmm. uh, like we'll go from sanitary pads, right. tampons are there, and vaginal cups are there. But yes, if you'll consider the financial mm -hmm. uh, ground, mm -hmm. every year a female is around spending uh, 100 pounds right. um, on these uh, uh, commercial yeah. items yes so definitely mm -hmm. if we are having something which mm -hmm. can be reused yes but yes at the same time hygienically safe then yes it's a good option no? absolutely it's a good option yes especially in her case she's yeah. looking at the girls who really can't yeah. afford pads yeah. and I'm thinking it's, it's 2021 I know there was a bill in two, 2017 yeah. where we were supposed to have the government contribute pads to, exactly. to children, to basically girls, especially right. in school. Right. And that's not happening. Yeah. And I feel like uh, especially our women uh, political uh, representatives yeah. are not doing enough whereby condoms are free. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, yes. And, and yes, pads free. are actually quite expensive. expensive. Exactly. And not just that, yeah. but because it's a choice to have sex but it's another to not delay your period, unless you're pregnant, <laughs> which, yeah, which is yeah. unfortunate because yeah. in this case what's happening is the girls who can't afford these pads uh, end up being exposed to doing something for men to give them pads and they end up being pregnant, yeah. all right? And uh, so when it comes to sexual health, administration health, education, yeah. do you feel like our boys are being left out? Ah. Uh, uh, yes. what I feel is yes. sex education mm -hmm. is considered as a taboo you yes. know in most yes. of the societies yes even our parents yeah. they don't feel mm. uh, comfortable yeah. and they feel embarrassed to right. talk about sex even to their children yes so what I feel is sex mm -hmm. education mm -hmm. should be imparted to both girls and boys, and boys yes. at an early age mm -hmm. not at an age when they start with the act actually Thing. So, yes. uh, like if I'll uh, quote you an example, mm -hmm. like in the country of Holland, right? Uh, they start this uh, sex education mm -hmm. uh, from very beginning, at the age of four or five. Oh, oh yes. So they have brought down the incidence mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. teenage pregnancy, mm -hmm. abortions, mm -hmm. STDs mm -hmm. in their country. Right. So I think we can also do that, no? Exactly. And mm -hmm. uh, it should not it should not be considered only a part of uh, the school responsibility. Mm -hmm. It should start from the home exactly okay yes so the parents should be resp uh, felt responsible mm -hmm. apart from the teachers yes. or a proper sex trainer should be there right. in the schools right no? to guide them mm -hmm. what exactly mm -hmm. they have to be trained for like the correct knowledge and the essential knowledge about uh, sex absolutely so this is what is yes. uh, actually needed you know that's the thing that's the thing. I yeah. think I grew up at, uh, in a very lucky time, uh, or maybe the government was doing right then, because uh, like um, you were telling me earlier, they will come and bring the pads, yeah. uh, or the girls are called. Yeah. If you're under the age of nine, <laughs> you're needed. So it's even embarrassing. Exactly. And you're taken exactly. to a room and you're told, here, yeah, the pads do this. Yeah. But then we got lucky enough to be shown even how to use them. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, at the end of the day, with any kind of issues that we have as a country, yeah. it all boils down to ignorance, yeah. whereby if we only educate one person and we, do, we leave out the other, we, 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 are, we are actually we are coexisting, but we're not coexisting properly. That's why you find the boys will be doing things. Yeah. That's why you're finding girls losing out 
a right. lot. Exactly. Uh, I right. read a case whereby um, a girl got her period, it was her first time, she was 14 yeah. in class 8, yeah. and she went to the teacher, the teacher told her off, like you dirty, go and exactly. do something. Exactly. And she went home and uh, she told the mom, and I think the mom, again, when we were saying parenting and this education should yeah. start, yeah. Uh, the mom didn't do anything. She actually went to fetch water. Unfortunately, yeah. the girl killed herself. Can you imagine? So it's really extreme in this matter. And I think with education, with a conversation, I mean, period has been there since time in memory. Since time, exactly. Right. <coughs> but why are we still losing out? Yeah. And, uh, you know, in your case, um, now let's uh, sort of bust the meats, yeah? Okay. When you're on your period, you're told, you should not take this. I remember when I was in high school, I was yeah. told, yeah. first of all, if you want it to come quick, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. eat these, these sweets other things. and chocolates. Yeah. 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 Chocolates right? and sweets, yeah. And I was like, I look back and I'm like, wow, that was, that was not the correct information no, exactly. for my peers. Yeah. So what, is, is, is there a myth in terms of uh, menstruation when a woman is going through this period yeah. that they're supposed to eat certain foods? Uh, see, yes. uh, definitely certain foods, mm -hmm. they are aggravating uh, what we call premenstrual syndromes or some uh -huh. abdominal cramps right. or the symptoms of uh, periods actually. Uh -huh. So apart from these foods, we can take everything. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, th the list is very few actually, yes. very short. Yes. Like uh, we should restrict uh, taking extra salt mm -hmm. because as okay. we know that medically salt yes. causes water retention. Yes, yes, and yes. And basically yes. uh -huh. uh, periods, they are uh, governed hormonically. It's true. So uh, yeah. they themselves are causing bloating. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so if you take something mm -hmm. which add up this bloating, mm -hmm. uh, the symptoms aggravate. It's true. So better not mm -hmm. to have like extra salt, mm -hmm. some coffee, mm -hmm. sugar, mm -hmm. sugary foods, yes. alcohol, <laughs> and like like these. Yeah. No, you can have them in moderate amount. Yes, in moderate. But yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Yes. But uh, uh -huh. initially, like in for the first sec first two or three days, yes. when the flow is heavy, actually. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So you can avoid these foods. Yes. The rest, everything is okay, no? I, I think yeah, yeah, they can they can go and party, no? A exactly. Yeah, exactly. A and and you know, and as a doctor in your field, yeah. it all boils down to basically a healthy life with a healthy diet from Monday yeah. to Monday. It doesn't yeah. mean only when you're on your period. Yeah, yeah? exactly. Right. Yeah. So I, I'm going to ask you quickly, like, what 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 is the one thing you've been told about your period? And you're like, really, guys? Because I know you've been doing a lot of research on that. Yeah. Uh -huh. so, mm -hmm. Number one. Yes. Mm -hmm. You take a lot of chips. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then again, I think it's so salt. this is the medical reason behind it. Yes. No? Because yes. they are salty and salt is aggravating the bloating. True. So this true. is the reason. Otherwise, of course, you can have uh, yes. chips, chocolates, you know. They are mood elevators, basically. It's true. <laughs> First thing, yes. what I had mm -hmm. from the interior, mm -hmm. uh, you don't take chips. <laughs> Just a bit Particularly chips. salt, yeah, yes, <laughs> right? It's uh -huh. actually because of salt. The doctor oh. has said it. <laughs> <laughs> so now you have something to take back to the girls you yeah, educate. Yeah, I have uh -huh. something to take back. Yes. And then mm -hmm. um, another thing, mm -hmm. when you are having, mm -hmm. uh, you don't let anyone see. Because when they see, mm -hmm. they, it is like uh, they will kill you. Fertility. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. Now this is a myth. Yes. <laughs> That's a myth for you. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> you you ensure that you just hide yourself yes. until you are done. Yeah. And when you are done, mm -hmm. if you are using the disposable, mm -hmm. ensure you throw them in the pit latrine. Oh, if yeah. you just throw them anyhow, anyway, we have going to pick it. A witch <laughs> and, and do rituals with it. Yeah. <laughs> myth, right? Myth. Exactly. Yeah. Myth. exactly. So you ensure you yes. you just hide yes. them. Yes. And then another thing mm -hmm. they say that when you're having, uh, I mean, cramps, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. you you just have to go. Maybe you go and then you sleep with your, with your belly, stomach. wow, yeah, down. Okay. Yeah. All right. I think so, that, so that, that's I, a good point. Whereby yeah, yeah. I mean, so yes. this is for what we should mm -hmm. have sex education. Mm -hmm. no? Uh, see, we are ha we are imparting reproductive information right. to all the students in school. Right. But reproductive information is not the mm -hmm. same as sex education. Exactly. Right. Yeah. We are telling them what mm -hmm. is exactly happening. 
uh, uh, what is the no normal anatomy or physiology of the body but right. we are not telling what changes occur at what age and how they should you know take care right. of themselves right. what is their sexual responsibility mm -hmm. or to make them responsible mm -hmm. in for their future life okay, okay. so okay. this thing it yes. comes in the sex education basically yes. to make yes. our future generation the students the children yes. to be more responsible absolutely having sexual ethics sexual yes. responsibilities yes. yes so this is more important i, I think i agree and it should not be like uh, a bookish knowledge no right. what we are uh, giving our uh, children is mm -hmm. the bookish knowledge Absolutely. we are not giving them the practical knowledge yes. so that's why there are a lot of myths mm -hmm. they are you know revolving mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. the incorrect information mm -hmm. and uh, this is our moral uh, duty to right. correct them at, uh, at that point exactly as she said yes. that yes they should not you know go out or <laughs> or <laughs> be in contact oh, with course. people yes, it's yes, a myth yes. no oh, as a matter of fact there's a village here in yeah. kenya uh, at a community actually that uh, tells girls the minute your period arrives at whatever age 9 10 11 you're not supposed to sleep in your mother's house anymore uh, i'm telling you they're taken out yeah. and they are most likely married all because they've come of age exactly. and it's actually quite a sad state yeah, of affairs yeah, because yeah. Um, period and menstrual health and everything about it, yeah. it goes on and on and on. It's, it digs deeper and deeper and oh. deeper. With it comes, like now, uh, with the luxury of a woman like yourself, you yeah. and myself, yeah. we, we, we have the luxury, we have the we have like a box of tampons, yeah. a box of uh, panty liners and Very pads good. for each use. Yeah. But now we are dealing with menstrual pain, for instance. Yeah. We are dealing with heavy flow. Exactly. You see, it's layers after layers. Yes. And talking of menstrual pain, yeah? Yeah. Uh, like she was saying that you're supposed to lay on your stomach. <laughs> what home remedies can one have other than, you know, going to a pharmacy and getting some painkillers? Ah. Uh, see beside mm -hmm. painkillers which mm -hmm. are there available on the counter no? right um, menstrual cramps they are very common right okay yes. and uh, uh, they are just because the uterus is trying to expel whatever is there inside yes okay yes the menstrual blood right. as well as the tissue which yes. has to be shed every month yes, yes okay yes, yes, yes. it has to be come out uh, uh -huh. of the body yes um, so uh, there are like uh, different things we can do at home first right. mm -hmm. and the foremost is uh, first is rest of then course. and the support of the family uh -huh. okay. okay they should not be neglected they should uh -huh. not be put to the other room or right. just out, out yes. of the house yes. No? Yes. 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 because it's something which is uh, associated with I mean, emotions also true, true, true. The females have true. mood swings no? yes. mood yes. swings yes. then irritability and definitely they are bleeding at that True, time no? fatigue. fatigue headache Feeling. bloating yes, soreness exactly. you know yes there's so a list of uh, yes. symptoms yes. they can have Absolutely. so at that time yes. they need a sympathetic uh, environment basically yes. at home yes they should take rest yes. they can take a hot water bottle mm -hmm. to oh, yes. to, soothe, know, the to area. soothe the area uh -huh. then they can have a hot bath okay and that's it i think okay and uh good food mm -hmm. oh yes, that's oh, it, yes. I think. and yeah. wait it out yeah wait it out yeah uh, yeah um did you want to add something uh, um, uh -huh. two questions uh -huh. okay there's also this myth that i had uh -huh. that uh when you're having the cramps mm -hmm. and then you take you take uh, painkillers mm -hmm. like maybe brufen, you mm -hmm. come across panadols mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they normally kill your fertility mm -hmm. and oh. then number two uh, yeah uh, what can you do? I mean, when we, most of the girls they are about to approach their periods, mm -hmm. we have those big pimples that oh, they yeah. normally Hormonal had. Pimples. Yeah. I have a good one here. <laughs> <laughs> I felt it last night. Yes. Yeah, so yes. when you even press, yes. and then you touch another part on the face, yes. it just come from that again. Oh, again. Come on. Right. <laughs> me. Okay. I'm not even a doctor, but I am sure I can see. I can see Doctor Singer like yeah, yes. me, yes, me, yes, me. Yes. This right. Is what, this is what uh, we call uh, yes. premenstrual syndromes. No? Right. So uh, basically, it is because of uh, uh, less amount of progesterone in the body. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. The premenstrual, and most of the girls, like around ninety percent of the f uh, women, they have this syndrome in one or the other form. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, so, like she said, yes, yes they. Uh, 
can experience uh, the occurrence of the pimples on right, their face. Right. Again, it is it is uh, the oh. indication that yes, you are about to get your periods. Uh -huh. Okay, oh, in few days. Right yeah. after. Yeah, okay. and they have they are not basically uh. pustules kind of things. Yes. Yes. They are hormonically de uh, determined. Yeah. So they are basically the eruptions. Mm -hmm. They are painful, mm -hmm. and they go away once you start with uh, the periods. It does it and they never okay. uh, leaves marks. Marks. It's true. Okay, yep. these pimples. Yeah. yeah. They never uh, leaves mark. Yeah. The one which are leaving marks, they are actually acanes. Right. And that is completely a different, a different entity. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So. Yes. I, I yes, agree. Another. I agree because mine pops disappears. Yeah. The, the like this one. This is two days old, yeah. right after my period, oh. and it will just disappear on its own, not a mark. And and they oh. always is it true? They always come below this exactly. area. Exactly. So this is hormonal pimples are down here. Yeah. Oh. And and they're perfectly okay. So uh, talking of still, uh, and I think this is gonna go to uh, a level of even uh, contraceptives. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what period is too heavy? What is too heavy? Uh, see, uh, mm -hmm. to know what is too mm -hmm. heavy period, okay. uh, we should know first what is actually a normal period. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I think everybody knows what is period, no? Right. Um, when a woman is in her reproductive age group, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. is between 13 to 49, right. uterus prepare every month yes. for pregnancy. Yes. And when this pregnancy doesn't happen, it has to shed its shed. lining. Yes, yes. Okay, yes. which comes as a monthly period. Mm -hmm. So uh, the bleeding, anything between 10 to 35 ml, mm -hmm. is considered as normal. Okay. So in terms of like uh, um, throughout your periods, if you are using two to seven pads, uh -huh. sanitary pads or tampons, throughout okay. your throughout. period, okay. yeah. So it's considered normal. Okay. So we should know what is normal. Uh -huh. Then we can, uh, you know, uh, yes. pr uh, progress further. To consider what is heavy. Absolutely. So, if a uh, woman is having uh, need to change pad mm -hmm. every two hours or less, mm -hmm. then it is considered okay. heavy. Okay. She should go and see her okay. gynecologist. Oh, absolutely. Okay. And there's always a solution. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I. I I'll, I'll give my own personal um, experience. Um, I was on IUD, yeah. the copper tea, yeah. for a year. A year, yeah. no, more, uh, two years actually, two years, okay. Okay. and my period just kept coming. It wasn't heavy, but mm -hmm. it was too, it was too prolonged, yeah. light and mm -hmm. prolonged. Mm -hmm. And I think I was starting to feel weak and all that. And I went to my gyna, and she was like, "Would you consider something else?" And I told her, "What? As long yeah. as it's not super duper hormonal, yeah. because of course of you course. will lose everything." Exactly. And she suggested uh, Mirena, mm -hmm. which I put two months ago, and my goodness. So I had my first period and then obviously it was very heavy, it was, everything was shedding out. Yeah. Then the second time I thought I was just spotting, yeah. but it was my period. It's so light yeah. and I know I, I feel very happy and I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. And I think uh, again it goes deep and down to also self-education yeah. and where people fail to do that. I think the greatest mistake is to seek opinion from peers because what I know is not what you know. You have a different perspective. Yeah. But if you go to, for instance, Dr. Singh, yeah. it's very simple. She'll tell you A, B, C, D. And true enough, I've never gone wrong yeah. with seeking yeah. advice yeah. Uh, from an actual doctor. Yeah. So I think that should be, at the, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. something that we should concentrate on other than exactly. listening to exactly. the peers and yeah. also self-education whereby you do your research yeah. and see what's happening. Because regardless, yes. regardless, mm -hmm. the uh, children still, yes. uh, you know, they'll, they'll get the knowledge yeah, yeah. either from the peers, yeah. from the internet, yeah. there's yeah. so many things. So many. But the, thing is that we should impart the correct knowledge. That's the thing, so that they're confident enough to say that's the yeah. correct information, yeah, that's exactly. not the correct information. Right. So we're just about to wind up our show and I'm going to let you say your final words to our audience about our today's topic, which I wish we can go <laughs> on and on and on, but uh, everything good has an end. <laughs> yeah, yes. mm -hmm. so this is what I'd like to say. Mm -hmm. Let us just do also male mm -hmm. involvement okay. because it is menstruation. Oh, yes. Yes. So we begin with men. You heard. <laughs> yeah, and yes. then um, let us also like work together. Okay. Let us avoid the stigma, let yes. us avoid the myth. Yes. Let us just be positive because yes. mm. just as you said, mm -hmm. the government have policy makers. Absolutely. 
uh, that is department for gender. Mm -hmm. So the policy makers, mm -hmm. let them also do their work. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And see to it. And see it. So okay. that is all I can say. All right. Yeah. Okay. And then a good support. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if we get the good support like us, the Angaza team in Kilifi, mm -hmm. we are ready to go more interior yes. and explore this like yes. for example what i've learned mm -hmm. today mm -hmm. i'm going to share out exactly and then when i become a period for ambassador or ambassador yes. for periods yes. and then i can do more i, I feel like you already <laughs> are with what she's doing you know, she's I, so yeah. young doing a lot all right uh because the future is female absolutely yeah, that is all <laughs> she's throwing exactly. very yeah. good yeah. quotes you know administration yeah. men and the future is female yeah. and dr say what are your final words to anyone who would be watching us uh, see um even the uh, beside the females yes as she said men should be involved because uh, we need to tell them to be more considerate more empathetic towards female during that period Absolutely. because yes we are giving uh, knowledge to both of them but they should consider because this entity is only with females Absolutely. so they cannot uh, really know what exactly the female is going through exactly so they should be more considerate towards yes. the female during that period Absolutely. so this is my uh, the thing or the this should be our approach basically towards our youngsters absolutely so that's what I thank want to say. you thank you so much for the few lovely ladies for you know honoring us with your presence so much. and for that gem of wisdom i've learned so much from you mm -hmm. and uh we hope to have you again all right uh, guys like we say everything good has an end i will not add any more than menstruation men future is female and as dr singh says let's involve everybody let's educate 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 both men and women because this is not just a female problem it's a societal problem and we can do so much with it we can kill all the myths we can get rid of the stigma that comes with it do you have any more information or see how you can support the angaza foundation or anyone who comes on board kindly reach us out on our social media pages at y254 tv on social media pages and my page maureen yt2 and we'll get back to you so that we can have you on board and we solve these matters of reproductive health which brings parenthood and the issues that come with it until next time have a good night